For the last 15 years, the feudal overlords at Google have been sitting up in their high castle above the hill. All of us peasants in the valley farm our plots and use Google search. And all of us pay a tribute to King Google in the form of Google AdSense. Through this system, Google has amassed a vast pile of data gold, the biggest in history. Google has consolidated its hold and accumulated over 90% of the search engine market, which now accounts for 60% of all their income. They sit comfortably on top of that huge mound of gold, conservative and wary of any change that might spell disaster. But then, over the horizon, comes a roaming horde of warriors with a powerful new device, the Canon, ChatGPT. OpenAI have nothing to lose, no search engine kingdom or castle, and everything to gain. Their investors, I mean, allies, Microsoft, also have everything to gain compared to their meager income from Bing. If you've accumulated the capital required to have a big expensive castle like this one, then you're not going to want to relinquish it to a bunch of grubby users. And that's why they've begun to bombard the Google Castle. With the deep pockets of Microsoft and the practical experience of OpenAI, their alliance makes a lot of sense. They formed a powerful parasitic bond, reliant on each other for their strength. Microsoft takes a heavy tax of 49% of OpenAI's bounty. And in return, OpenAI gets free foundries and gunpowder to build their cannons all on Microsoft Azure, with cloud computing power. So Google raises the alarm, causing some peasants to rejoice, running to the safety of the OpenAI army and their powerful ChatGPT cannon. They even give them gifts in the form of ChatGPT subscriptions. This is amazing. Who knew such technology existed, they say. But the engineers in Google's castle have been working on special cannons before, but they never proved them as safe enough to use. Now, they're panicking. Do we shoot back at them? They ask King Google. King Google looks up at the tattered house banner on the wall of the castle. Don't be evil. Google has developed powerful weapons of war before. There's Google Image and AI, a powerful cannon for generating images. Medpalm 2, a cannon for targeting medical questions with an 85.4% accuracy, almost double that of anyone else. But Google didn't seem to have a powerful, all-purpose cannon to shoot back, until now, Google Bard, which for the purposes of this metaphor is going to be a cannon, but let's just say the cannon is shot by a bard. As you might have seen, Bard is not as good as ChatGPT. It hallucinates answers, gives wrong answers, and has difficulty understanding, meaning the cannon is constantly missing. OpenAI and Microsoft seem to have a technological upper hand at the moment. OpenAI are the first ones to fire the cannon, and so far, it seems like they have the best one. In fact, when they were upgrading from this to this, it was made even better using the crucial early data from the peasants. Every medieval army needs this data in order to develop their cannons. It's even more important than having a well-designed cannon, and without user feedback, they'll never even be sure how to refine it. Meanwhile, Lord Zuckerberg and Meta are over here, scratching their heads. They've created a few random cannons like Galactica for summarizing research papers, and Cicero for playing the game Diplomacy and strategizing with human players. They have hordes of data gold from their social media sources, and they're the only ones who really compete with YouTube's dominance of media data. But they lack focus, and crucially, the trust of the people. They have few moral qualms, however, and will stop at nothing to further the beliefs of their all-powerful king. Several other armies with cannons also exist. There's Anthropic's Clawed AI, which it claims is much better than ChatGPT, though we haven't really seen what it can do yet. Megatron Turing by NVIDIA, which apparently is the most powerful model in English. But more importantly, at NVIDIA, they are a foundry where they make gunpowder for the cannons. They have a couple specialty cannons of their own, but they know their money will be made in dealing out the raw materials that all these upcoming wars will require. Processing power. 
Then there's Hugging Face, which acts as a librarian, cataloging new advances and designs, and creating a platform for this new canon industry to communicate on. Amazon is the biggest wildcard, with Alexa being their first implementation of a canon, which really nobody is talking about. They sit on a vast hoard of consumer information, and like Meta, have few qualms about doing whatever they like with it. Don't be surprised if a shiny new Bezos cannon rolls off the production line soon. Their knowledge of your buying habits could enable an upcoming cannon to seal their already colossal lead over the retail space online. And none of that is even mentioning Yandex or Baidu, Google equivalents in their own markets who will also compete on the international stage. But there's still a few hidden data kings lying in the shadows. Apple and Samsung might have early versions of Canons sitting in your pocket right now. And their data about your day-to-day -day usage of time might be key in learning just what kind of Canon everyone is going to want in the future. Another ancient battleground of these giants is the space of word processing. Microsoft, with 375 million paying users, has reforged Clippy into a Canon for PowerPoint, Word, and Excel that improves productivity. Google Drive will almost certainly be implementing something like that soon. OpenAI and ChatGPT have been the most popular AI usurpers because they've moved first, gathering the first data on the ground and pioneering new ideas for future developments. This advantage has made Google's Bard look silly in comparison. But Google's pockets are deep, perhaps the deepest of any of these data hoarders, and all they need to do is catch up on a three-month lead. The final key advantage of Google is that they're not reliant on the black powder from NVIDIA. In fact, they have their own recipes for powering their own cannons, quantum and otherwise. Who knows if Google can grow something themselves that makes OpenAI's cannon look primitive in comparison.